What's up, lore masters? Today we'll be breaking down the Zindi ships. I enjoy the Zindi arc because, unlike some adversaries, it felt like their interactions and species had been thought out, to some degree at least. Their ships feel diverse and logical, or at least look diverse and logical since we don't have a ton of information on them. Let's just get into it. The Aquatic Zindi, also known as the Aquatics, would be the most advanced of all the Zindi on the Council, despite having no thumbs or working in an environment that would be conducive to building ships. The most well-known ship is that of the Aquatic Cruiser. Wait a second, that's an Andorian ship, not an Aquatic. Put an Aquatic up. Ah, there we go. Wait. It's the same thing. They're the same fucking ship! The most well-known vessel of the Aquatics is that of the Aquatic Cruiser. The ship is massive, being at least 1,800 meters long. It would have the ability to utilize impulse engines, enter into warp, and travel via the subspace vortex. While we don't have the exact numbers on the warp speeds, we know that this ship was the slowest of all the Zindi vessels. Per memory alpha, the ship featured a hydrodynamic swept wing hull and additionally had a larger hangar bay that could hold multiple different kinds of vessels. The ship also had several spaces available for non-aquatic life forms in order to interact and hold meetings. The vessel would be one of the more crucial ships to assist in stopping the Zindi super weapon. Additionally, it would be confirmed to have at least two to three particle beam weapons and possibly more. I'm also going to say that I believe the ship had torpedoes, though we never confirmed that it did. The aquatic cruiser, along with other vessels of aquatic design, would also utilize a special type of escape pod. These pods make no sense to me. It doesn't seem well suited for aquatics, and if it was made for other species, why? As far as I can tell, no non-aquatic life forms actually served aboard aquatic ships, as far as we could see at least. So why would this type of design exist? It just doesn't make a ton of sense of why they'd have it. What does make more sense beyond aquatic life forms that look like wells with no discernible opposable thumbs controlling ships is that of the aquatic scout ship. These would be faster and more maneuverable than the cruiser and utilize torpedoes and presumably also particle beam weapons. Like the cruiser, we see several in combat but don't get a ton of information on them. We would have even less information on the Zindi Arboreals. They sported a starship cruiser that is observed utilizing multiple particle weapons. The cruiser could maintain impulse warp and be able to enter into the vortex. We also see several of these ships participating in the battle that attempts to destroy the Zindi superweapon. Additionally, they would also have a landing craft that was more akin to a shuttlecraft. Given by its name, I'll let you guess what it's known for. The Zindi Insectoid Patrol Ship is a warp-capable vessel that would have directed energy weapons. Largely utilized by the Insectoids, this ship appears to be one of the mainstays when it comes to defense, as it's seen more often defending military installations, even when those installations have other Zindi present. The ship is often seen in swarms when attacking an opponent. The Zindi Insectoids would also have a scout ship that could hold a crew complement of at least three. These vessels were also warp capable, but appeared to be no match for an NX class starship. The Zindi Insectoids also had a shuttlecraft that was a smaller vessel that was utilized as a support craft for larger ships. The vessel appears to be specialized as it's designed so that the ship can go into gas giants and underwater. Even though it's positioned as some kind of combat craft, as far as I could find, there were no weapons with the ship. However, it did have both warp and could enter into the vortex. While we don't see many primate vessels, one we do see is classified as a cruiser. The ship appears to be among the more powerful vessels available. The ship would have directed energy weapons as well as the ability to utilize impulse, enter into warp, and the vortex. Like other vessels, it seems reasonable that this ship could utilize torpedoes as well, but there's no confirmation of this. We additionally see a shuttle that appears to be part of the primate vessels. The shuttle is elongated, being able to seat three to four comfortably. Given the reptilians were the primary bad guys, it's not surprising that we would have more information on their ships. The reptilian the warship would be warp capable with a crew complement of at least 22 people and have 7 decks. It would have the ability to enter into the vortex and was generally considered more advanced than the NX class. The ship would additionally have sensor encoders to determine how it was destroyed, should it be destroyed. Which makes me wonder why didn't all the Zindi ships have this? Hell, why don't all ships have this, period? The vessel would be equipped with particle beam weapons and torpedoes. There would be other ships that weren't immediately identifiable to which type of Zindi they belong. This included the Zindi cargo vessel, which was used for the prototype weapon. The ship would have warp, impulse, and vortex capabilities, but seemed to have no offensive weaponry. Again, ultimately, I like where they were going with the Zindi. I could see that they were trying to make them diverse. However, they did make so many vessels that we don't have a ton of information on them. So it's kind of pick your poison. We could have multiple vessels making them seem diverse with not a lot of information about them, or a few vessels where we have all of the technical breakdowns. 
Personally, even though I like to focus on the lore, I do kind of like the aesthetic and the feel multiple vessels give. But that's my opinion. As always, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And as I always say, in the end, we're all just stories. Make yours a good one.